chase problems. A chase problem is a problem where the two objects that are there are two objects in the motion and there's some relationship between the distance or displacement of each object and the time that it takes for them to uh, the time that it takes for them to go through that displacement. It doesn't have to be an exact equality. It doesn't have to be that the displacement of one object is equal to the displacement of the other object, but they have to be related to each other. Similarly, um, the time can be can have a can have an offset or something like that, but they have to be related to one another. The way that we're going to handle this kind of problem is that we're going to write equations for both objects separately, ensuring that we include their displacement and their time in those equations. And then we're going to use the relationship between their displacement and their times to create a system of two equations and two unknowns and solve. So here's an example. A speeder passes a police officer traveling at a constant velocity of 131, 130 kilometers an hour. So I'm going to say S for speeder is traveling with an initial velocity 130 kilometers per hour. The stationary police officer chases after the speeder with a constant acceleration. So they were stationary and they're chasing with an acceleration of 12 meters per second squared. That's a little unreasonable, but that's fine. And the question is how far do they go before they before the police officer catches up? Also notice it says up here that it was a constant velocity, so the acceleration of the speeder is zero. Um, as a quick side note, of course 130 kilometers an hour, we can't live with that. We have to make the conversion. And that turns out to be 36.1 meters per second. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure that I include the displacement and the time in each one of these uh, sets of variables because in this particular case um, there they are the same. So the, the time in, for the speeder and the cop, police officer as the police officer tries to catch up it's going to be the same amount of time when he catches up and they will have covered the same distance or the same displacement. With that in mind then I can create an equation for the speeder Maybe we'll, um, that was fine. Which will be v1 t plus one half acceleration times time squared factors. And for the police officer, And at this point, I'm going to substitute into these equations to hopefully make them as simple as possible. So the delta d, and I'm going to start calling that delta ds for the speeder, is equal to um, 36.1 meters per second times time, plus the acceleration is zero, so that whole term goes to zero. I can ignore it. For the police officer, the first term is zero, so that whole term goes away and I can ignore it. It's one half times 12 meters per second squared, t squared. Now here, um, I'm just going to do that one half of 12 to make that a tiny bit simpler. Um, I can solve this equation either way. Uh, I think what I'll do is... Um, I think I'm going to recognize that the displacement of the speeder equals the displacement of the police officer. Give myself a little bit more room here. Delta D speeder is equal to the displacement of the police officer. And so I can use that to create one equation. that I can solve. Um, I'm going to move everybody to the right hand side here.
and um, I'm gonna I'll be formal with this. I'll factor out the t. And I can recognize from this that t equals zero is a solution, but it's not one we're interested in. Or six meters per second squared t minus thir er, getting ahead of myself there minus thirty six point one meters per second is equal to zero, and so six meters per second squared. T is equal to 36.1 meters per second. Divide both sides by 6. Then I'm going to get a time of 6 seconds. Okay. With that time of 6 seconds, I can go back to either one of these equations and substitute to find the distance. Um, ah, what the heck, I use the one for the police officer. So 6 times 6 times 6 is 216 meters. So that would be how far the police officer had to go to catch up to the speeder and obviously then it is the same distance that the uh, speeder would have traveled in the same amount of time. You're late for your bus. You are still 10 meters away when it starts to pull away with an acceleration of 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Here's you. The bus is 10 meters in front of you. There it is. Okay. And uh, you accelerate at 1.3 meters per second squared and you have an initial velocity of 3.0 meters per second. The bus, we're assuming it says it's just started to pull away, so that means that it was at rest. And it has an acceleration of uh, 0 0.5 meters per second squared. And again, imagine here you and the bus are trying to travel a related amount of time or a related amount of distance in the same amount of time. So that's why this is a chase problem. You're not traveling the same distance as the bus. You specifically, delta d person, is going to have to be equal to whatever distance the bus travels plus 10. As in you've got to go 10 further than him to catch, him up, can catch up to him. And this is what I mean by the displacements don't have to necessarily be equal. They have to be relatable to one another. And that is all going to occur in the same period of time. So that's, so that's that. So let's write out an equation for each for the uh, for the person delta d. We don't know, but we do know v1 of 3.0 meters per second t plus one half. 1.3 meters per second squared t squared so that's the delta d of the person and the got a little big there so I'll go over here to make the delta d for the bus is equal to um, v1 t plus one half a t squared. Here the initial velocity is zero, so this term is zero. So we're looking for a displacement on a bus here uh, of one half times 0 0.5 meters per second squared t squared. Now using this equation, I can combine these two relationships to make an equation that's solvable for t. It's going to be a bit of a pain to solve for t, but it's solvable for t. So let's 
Let's find ourselves some space to work in and then do that. So here we're going to say delta D for the person is equal to, remember, you have to catch the bus. So you have to travel as far as the bus did plus an additional 10. So delta D for the person is this big equation down here. 3.0 meters per second T. I'm copying from here. Uh, plus, you can simplify that, 0 0.65 meters per second squared t squared and that's all going to be equal to the displacement of the bus just simplify that right here 0 0.25 meters per second squared t squared that right there so 0 0.25 meters per second squared t squared plus 10 as in you have 10, um, 10 meters further to go. Okay, uh, I don't know if you see this lining up yet or not, but this is going to turn into a quadratic. The 0 0.65 meters per second squared, t squared minus 0 0.25 meters per second squared, t squared. I brought that over to the left. I'm bringing over everybody to the left plus 3.0 meters per second t minus 10 is all equal to 0 and I can simplify my like terms here 0.65 less 0.25 is 0 0.4 meters per second squared t squared plus 3 meters per second t minus 10 equals 0 using my quadratic formula, there's my A, there's my B, there's my C. So I get the square root. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. T equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. There is a way to do the quadratic formula probably on the calculator that you're using. I suggest looking it up on YouTube. Somebody for uh, somebody certainly has put out a video that explains how to do it. Uh, I can't obviously tell you that because it depends on what kind of calculator you're using. But you're on YouTube already, so I suggest you look it up. It certainly is easier than doing all of this. If you do all this, it works out to uh, 5. So fire all that in, you get 5, that's 0 0.8. And then I can write out my two roots separately, minus 3, minus 5, divided by 0 0.8, or minus 3, plus 5, divided by 0 0.8. Um, this one is going to equal... 2 divided by 0.8, which works up to 2.5 seconds. And this one, 3 plus 8, uh, eight. equals oh, negative 10 seconds. So there you go. Um, this is obviously the root that we're interested in. This root is very weird. I guess if um, we were to try and graph these things and understand where that root came from, uh, you would start here in the bus. Let's say the bus starts up here. So the bus is a quadratic, a very shallow quadratic like that. You are a quadratic that goes like this. And you're meeting here at 2.5 seconds. But I guess if you extend those back because you're a sharper quadratic, remember the model doesn't know that time doesn't go infinitely far back or infinitely forward, so this would be that t equals negative 10 root, um, for whatever that's worth. This is the bus. This is u.
if you plotted those quadratics. So this obviously though is like going backwards in time and meaningless. Okay, so it took you, what, 2.5 seconds to catch the bus. So the question actually asked, what is your top speed when you catch the bus? So if we go back to our original information, you had a V1 of 3, a acceleration of, can't remember, 1.3. And now we know it took you 2.5 seconds to catch the bus. So we're looking for V2 to answer the final question. I'll multiply both sides by 2.5 seconds. And then I can add that 3 meters per second to both sides. And I get 6.25 meters per second. I don't know about you, but meters per second isn't uh, a unit that I really sort of have a good feel for. This works out to 22.5 kilometers per hour, um, which in my mind isn't that unreasonable for a person to run. It's not uh, not going to be a sustainable speed, but I don't think it would be impossible for you to get up to that speed. So uh, this isn't totally unreasonable. All right. I feel like I should do a train question because when you're um, studying physics or when they always talk about physics in the media and what have you, it's always these kinds of a train leaves this place or a train leaves that place. So here's our train question so that we uh, can uh, have one. Train leaves Toronto traveling it to Ottawa at 35 meters per second. A second train leaves Ottawa traveling to Toronto at 40 meters per second. Toronto and Ottawa are 500 kilometers apart. How far away from Toronto was the first train? when the trains meet. So I'm going to call the first train train A and I'll call the second train no, there we go. Train B. Uh, the velocity of the first train is 35 meters per second uh, and it's it, it doesn't say anything about an acceleration or a change, so we're going to assume it's not accelerating. Um, we don't know what its displacement is, but we can relate the displacement to the train B. And I, I did this problem especially too because it isn't like one object's trying to catch up to the other object. What's really important here is that the absolute value of their displacements has a specific value. It's 500 kilometers or 500,000 meters. For train B I've got a velocity of 40 meters per second and again we're implying that it has no acceleration and whatever time is for one train and the other train it doesn't make any difference it's time. So this is a chase problem in that I can come up with a relationship between the displacement and the time associated with two objects. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same basic thing. I'm going to write out that delta d equation and then I'm going to substitute it into that equation and then hopefully I can solve. Mathematically this will work out a little bit easier this time because we have some zeros to work with which makes our life a little bit easier. So 
so that one is a zero t squared, so that goes away. And similarly for the displacement of train B, and once again I think I said this previously, but you could use the simplified delta D equals V1T equation for this because it is a situation of zero acceleration. But remember you're never going to go wrong using the bigger equation. You might make a mistake using the smaller equation. So the safe thing to do is to always use the bigger equation. The acceleration is zero, so that term goes away too. So there I have it. I have two equations for each thing. Now you might be saying to yourself, well if one train is going in the positive direction, the other train should be going in the negative direction. But if I look up here, I'm going to see I want the absolute value of their displacements. I don't want to worry about they're coming together, but that's not really what's important. It's about the total distance they travel. So I'm going to basically just ignore the sign that would have been there. And if you want, if you prefer, if it helps you think about it, you can say that the absolute value took care of it. What's important here is that the total distance, not displacement, but the total distance traveled by these trains has to equal 500,000 meters when they're going to meet in the middle. So delta dA can be substituted here, 35 meters per second, T, plus delta dB, 40 meters per second, T, and that's going to equal 500,000 meters. Adding like terms, I have 75 meters per second T, and that's equal to my 500,000 meters. And then dividing both sides by that 75. T works out to be. Six thousand six hundred and sixty six point seven. And that might seem like a sort of extreme number. But keep in mind, we're, we're in seconds right now. So that's, you know, what is that, about two hours or something like that? It hasn't been, it's not all that large of a number. The trains are going pretty fast. Anyway, with that number, what I've been asked for is how far away from Toronto is the first train when the trains meet. So what I need to know then is the displacement of train A. That's the train that's traveling at 35 meters per second. So if I substitute that T value in, I'm going to get that it's 233.333 meters away, or I can round that to 233 kilometers away from Toronto. Okay, so those are chase problems. A few of the possible examples. There's obviously lots more. So that's it.